Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to On Your Mental. This is the podcast that shares candid, open, sometimes vulnerable conversations between and about men. Uh, I'm one of your co-hosts, Ruben. I'm the better co-host, Kabir. Arguably. Uh, This episode is one of two parts featuring Jeff Yu. Jeff Yu's been on the podcast before. He's got three degrees. One of them happens to be in uh, philosophy. And that's what we're getting into today with the meaning and purpose of life. I'm not going to say much more. I'm going to jump right into it. If you like this one, leave likes, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you want to see part two sooner, you want on the fi- line. 50 likes. That's all it takes. And you get part two next week. If it's not 50 likes, then it's... Uh, 10,000 for me to shave an eyebrow. That's another thing we could do. That's not going to happen. Anyways, we hope you all enjoy this part. Uh, We'll see you in a second when it starts. Peace. I was saying how good your your edits are so good. Thanks. I appreciate it. Actually, we had a good one, a good clip this weekend. Yeah. Talking about impotence. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Like a uh, like sex drive stuff. Right, and I think that was the last one. I didn't watch that one because mm-hmm. it wasn't super relevant to what we were doing today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but that was a I mean, people like that one. Three hundred thousand. Mm. Ooh, mm-hmm. you've been like well dethroned, by the way. I know that I saw the six hundred thousand. <laughs> right. The, yeah, the, there's the, one of the, the, yeah, the, the boys the in the game. One. Yeah. Oh, I'm still game. second. Yeah. I'm still second though. You're second to gaming. I know. <laughs> I see that. I was like, oh, this is such a yeah. boys. It, it is. is on your mental. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. <laughs> so I'm like, huh, in this one, I'm going to make some gaming references. <laughs> so it clip blows. It, clip it. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um, Jeff, welcome back. Oh, my God. The saga of getting this episode to even happen, first of all. I want to remind yeah. ourselves of that. Yes. This was supposed to happen, like, what, almost a month ago now? Probably, yes. I I feel like I've been dreading this one a little bit. Just, That's why I put it off. Yeah, I put it off a little bit. I mean, other things are going on, obviously, but it's one of those... This episode is definitely about big topics, right? Mm-hmm. Meaning and purpose of life. Yes. To summarize it. We'll, we'll get more into We're it. We're going to talk about yeah. God, yeah. death, yeah. free will. It's going to be a good one. Man. I believe in one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Yeah. <laughs> Find out. Man. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I don't want to, um, like normally we get some pleasantries in at the beginning mm-hmm. here. We've been talking a little bit already, but we'll get into it because two reasons I'll preface here. One, these are some, I guess, more thought provoking topics for half. Perhaps, perhaps. Um, see, my brain's working real good. Oh, thanks to Jeff for the wine. Oh by yeah, the way. we're, we're <laughs> winding it out. Um, but the other part is that this episode is going to be split into two. We're going to be doing a part one and a part two. And I'll say right now at the start of this episode, if you all, as the audience, like this part one and you want to see part two sooner, I'll put it out next week. But otherwise, if I don't hear any feedback, let's say let's leave a target. If we could hit 50 likes on this one, because I know a few of you like it. That's not very many here. (laughs) If we could hit 50 likes on the episode on YouTube, we will put... (laughs) I've watched it. It's like, if we get 10,000 likes, I'm just asking for 50, We're doing 50 here, okay? (laughs) If we get 50 likes on this week's episode, I'll put out part two a week from now. And, Otherwise, it'll be in two weeks. And and Ruben will shave one eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> Can neither confirm nor deny. Will you shave the other one and swap eyebrows? So you have like one tan, like you one dark what? one, one light one. That'd be I cool. will shave my eyebrow if this one gets 10,000 likes. Okay, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> There's no shot. Make it a TikTok. And then- <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Um, but yeah, we're going to get into meaning and life stuff. And I have the, the questions that we re- prepared here um on my phone because i don't want to i don't want to misquote anything and you came up with basically all these jeff yeah i mean in in preparing for this topic uh and like i'm not surprised about this is the thing that i want to talk about in the last couple ones i've done they're pretty broad as well you know love friendship but this is kind of the the big one the overarching one Mm -hmm. um that that i've thought a lot about and it's kind of the reasons why I've approached my education as the way I have, because I took my philosophy degree as my third degree. Not to be like the guy, I hate, I fucking hate my saying third my degree. third degree. I already had my English and my psychology, and then to actually actively pursue a philosophy degree 
really just means how much this topic means to me. Yeah, I mean, if you've already done two, is it worth it to do a third? Yeah. You'd have to, you'd have to maybe like what you're doing. <laughs> yes, yeah. mm. exactly. And I feel like for me and for everyone, I think that's why this topic is uh, hopefully approachable by everyone that's listening, is that we we do wonder this. Like, I think everyone's wondering wonder it as that's literally why we're here sometimes or mm-hmm. Oftentimes, I think people think about this question when there's a loss of meaning in their life, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, for me personally, I've just been always a very sort of energetic and restless person. And for me, I've always approached things in such a way where it's like, how, what is the best way to do something? Sure. If that makes sense. Like weighing out the, do you do like a pros and cons almost? Yeah. Of like the approach. Yeah. And I, and there's always this, f- not fear, but this sort of like, I don't want to make a mistake and regret. Hmm. And I know that sounds kind of weird and off topic, but what that really means is that I need to have a kind of top down viewpoint of life. Hmm. Um, I've, I've read like a lot of like journals and stuff where people should have like core values and stuff. And you should have these core values and then you use those core values to determine how to behave in life and make decisions. Mm -hmm. And I feel like literally the meaning of life is the ultimate core value thing and it trickles down into how you should be in life. Sure. At an individual level? At an individual level. And and that's what I kind of wanted to bring up here. Even though we're going to be talking about a lot of like really big topic things, I do also want to narrow it down and like filter it and funnel it to mm. see why it's applicable once you have sort of a understanding and of it. Cool. I'm fucking pumped, man. This is like, <laughs> listening to you talk, start talking about it? Cool. Um, I'll briefly say it, like hearing you, you talk about it that way and your approach of like wanting to do the best things and making the right decisions and everything that you're doing – that to me sounds very non-instinctual. Mm, interesting. And maybe that'll come up later uh, in our conversation. Yeah. You know what? To me, that maybe even sounds lazy. Mm. <laughs> that sounds to me like the opposite of lazy. It's funny how we're Is both it? hearing this. Yeah. Why, why does it sound well, lazy Well, I'm just saying that just to play, not really, but just for fun. But uh, <laughs> what I meant by it is you have like a playbook that you go by now. Yes. Mm. That was already built up without mm. without you even having to add to it or anything like that, you know? So you're not really having. I feel like there's less struggle. But that's the point. Yes. Because, yes. The, the, your template matching your approach yes, to things. Yes. Yeah. Maybe it's not lazy. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, yeah it's like, maybe it's smart. thanks, <laughs> guy. To me, it's like he built this up. That yes. that was the part that was like not lazy to me is that you're like calculating it, everything. That it, seems like extra work. It was like less work. <laughs> it it is less work, and I think that's the point because I feel like the moments in our life where we are in a crisis, right? Crisis is a decision between two not good things that's by definition right so that's what is it i didn't know that that's That's no 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 a dilemma sorry a dilemma dilemma dilemma. is two two crises type of thing Mm. um and in those situations you if you've pre-made as you said a template i like actually like that a lot then you have a better understanding and this approach is because in life we're provided so many options sometimes you're drowning in it right Mm -hmm. there's too too much and too many things and if you kind of know your path or the path that you want to take it kind of helps out weed out some of those options which goes back to the trying to do the right thing and we won't go into morality too much although that's a fundamental thing of mine i talk about way too much it's funny because if you know me as a person it's like jeff's all about morality that's Mm. that's kind of a weird thing but doing the right thing and living a good life Mm. people may not say in those terms but ideally i think that's what people want people want to live a good life whatever that means yeah and that is the meaning of life sorry uh, end 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 podcast yeah right um I feel I want to acknowledge the fact that like you being a repeat guest on this podcast makes me feel really fucking happy that we get to have you as our guest because you should have your own podcast. Oh my like the God. stuff that you talk about is really cool. <laughs> um, so let, let's get into a bit more sure. and I'm going to stick to the, the questions yes. to kind of guide us here. Mm-hmm. The first question was, do we feel, and we might defer a lot to your judgment in this episode, Jeff, mm-hmm. but do we feel that there's a difference between meaning and purpose based on whether or not you believe in a God, uh, religion, or some kind of belief system, uh, the afterlife? Does that, if you believe in those things, change your idea of what meaning and purpose are mm-hmm. in life? I chose that as kind of a first question simply because it helps us understand why we're asking the questions we're asking going forward. Mm. 
because it's um it's good to have kind of like a flow chart of ideas um i don't want to say there's this concept called like boolean ideology sorry mm. <laughs> i'm already getting into it's going to get into a lot of things here a lot of terms uh it's interesting uh bool uh was a philosopher but he was essentially a pioneer for uh um computer engineering and mm. a boolean system is just true false it's binary so mm. boole- a boolean ideology is essentially a binary ideology and it's it's easier to perceive the world as either true or not true give me some examples of, of what <laughs> of true or not true it's simple stuff Oh, yeah. I mean, just like, should I go out tonight, right? Yes, no. Mm. Should I have this for dinner? Why? Yes, no, right? Mm. And then that's essentially how binary works. That's mm. how all computers Should I raise work. a child? Yes, no. <laughs> yes, no. Those are probably not great examples <laughs> to, uh, to, to, to determine these things, but... Should I have a sip of wine? Yes. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> but in that system, we can essentially conceive of things a little bit more clear if we have uh opposites of each other and then choosing one or the other Mm. and a good way of introducing this topic of meaning in life is that we can go back and really look at human history and a lot of human history especially western history is religion christianity specifically but almost everywhere in the world you know i wouldn't say prehistorically but like you know a thousand years ago whatever right religion played a pretty major part in people's lives I mean, the meaning of life, I think, really was the first question, you know, humans asked once they were able to, right? Once mm. survival mm. was was no longer a thing that they worried too much about, it's kind of like, I got food, I got shelter, what else, right? right. That, it's one of these core questions that we have. And from the very beginning of time we conceived this, the answer was God or gods, Hmm. right and that's why i wanted to start this topic on that how can we know how can we that know that was the the meaning but you're, you're talking about history and just <sighs> religion specifically and there's a reason hmm. why across cultures and time there has i mean every conceivable society has has worshipped something hmm. right yeah can, i mean can yeah. you conceive of a society that hasn't worshipped something in, in no. terms of a deity and an afterlife no <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you could there's it's Ancient funny egypt they had they the had gods. gods no that's yeah. what i'm saying oh, yeah, like i'm know, going yeah, through yeah. in my head i'm like they're like everybody everybody <laughs> i can think more. of had gods. Name one more <laughs> name one more uh r- the romans the, yeah. the <laughs> roman empire they would have believed in roman gods roman gods and and even getting into like uh you know eastern cultures and stuff like this mm-hmm. um like you know buddhism uh, the, and and essentially these r- religion has several purposes two of them which are uh like relevant to what we're talking about which is the afterlife Mm -hmm. right and how we should act in this life to get to the after afterlife right 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 so that that really is the main point of and that ties into your morality piece too yes it does for sure because Mm. it's how we should behave but more so religion is one of those things where there's inherent meaning in life Mm mm-hmm so that's the the booleanness of it of the yes no or the binary <laughs> inherent meaning and there isn't inherent meaning in life mm. so that's the first kind of demarciation is that the proper word like the first kind of <laughs> like You're throwing out a lot of big words yeah, here the, i'm gonna the, take them as disrespect <laughs> <laughs> the first like cut in the path that we're mm. gonna do there we're gonna do either have inherent meaning or no inherent meaning Mm -hmm. and if we take the path of religion and i would like your opinions on this because this is you know obviously just my thoughts if you believe in religion therefore you inherently believe that there is a meaning in life Mm -hmm. because that meaning is to go to your religion's heaven and in this life to play by the rule books of that religion to do that agree disagree Uh, do all religions believe in an afterlife uh, or some sort of cycle of like right. like there's reincarnation, right. but they definitely all I think all religions by definition believe Sounds in some right. sort of afterlife. I mean, prove Sounds me wrong, right. then then yes, I agree with that. I I do agree. And and I mean, there might be examples of not, but those are rare, right? These those are more exceptions than the rule. Mm-hmm. So getting back to the topic of what this podcast is, technically, if you believe in a religion you have your meaning of life or you should or you ought to have it if you are truly a religious person 
then the meaning of life is abiding by your religion's rules and getting into their afterlife. Simple. Done. Clean. Sure. For the religious person. For the religious person. For the non-religious right. person. But for the non-religious person. And and like not to talk too much about religion and, and God and gods and stuff like that, but that is the topic that we're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. To um to derive meaning out of this. But you can still derive meaning. I feel as mm-hmm. though you can derive a meaning of life without religion. Yes. As someone who is not religious myself. Mm-hmm. I don't feel as though my life is meaningless. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's a good point. So, but does that mean that it has <laughs> meaning? It just means it's not meaningless. I'm just kidding. The word mm. that the, <laughs> sorry, you gonna say something? No, I was just, <laughs> just, just did one of those thinking. Mm. The the key word is inherent. There's either there's inherent meaning, mm. which is if you're religious or whatnot. Um, and you know, religious people may or may not agree with me in that way, but to put it in very simple terms, why are you a religious person if you're not trying to follow the rules of your religion and get into the afterlife? Yeah. Fair. And, and once again, not to get, I always keep saying, I get a topic of religion, but it's, it's important for Mm. our conversation. It's related. It's relevant. I've always questioned people that state that are, they are religious, but they break the rules of their religion. Right, so then why are, like, if you're not following it to a T, mm-hmm. do you really believe in the outcome that you're going to end e- up exactly. in, in that either cycle of their afterlife or whatever mm-hmm. it is that they're looking at? Mm-hmm. You know, that's, I, w- I would love to have these conversations with someone that is more into theology or have a degree, it'd be great to talk to someone that has a degree in theology, right? Mm. Um, but that's not a point of this conversation specifically because for those that don't have a religion or follow their religion religiously is that mm, <laughs> mm, mm. then then that begs the question what is existence without inherent meaning mm. right Which why is, do anything at all why do anything at all if there's no afterlife and there's no rule book mm. and that's scary mm-hmm. right that's that's yeah. really because i think scary. it's really easy to like if, if you went down that rabbit hole to say i don't need to do anything there's no point in me being good to other people. There's no point in me trying. There's no point in me looking out for my fellow man, if you will. You know, like mm. the, there's no point in me getting up every day and, and going to a job. You, Why does it matter? You might as well not just, you know, end it. And, and yet we're live. here. And yet we're here. And uh, Jean Paul Sartre, which is a more very, fucking this guy's very... making up names i'm not time. jean paul sartre Sorry. <laughs> french uh you guys read the outsiders in high school yeah yeah, yeah, yeah jean paul yeah. sartre that's the book that kind of made him famous okay but oh, he was okay. a key figure in existentialism hmm. and you remember the main character in his book blah 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 he was like pony it... boy pony boy <laughs> My, uh, no yeah. maybe was it that is po- it is right pony boy isn't that it? That was his nickname or whatever. Stay golden, pony boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Is that the Outsiders? That is the Outsiders. It is the Outsiders. Yeah. And they made the movie with uh, John Cusack. Isn't he in there? No, he's not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We don't need to know the details of the book. Okay, That's not okay, the point. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry. Um, why do I think at all? But yeah, but why Why live at all? And he, I'm, you know, I'm not going to cite it, but he writes very interesting essays about, yeah, he has was like, yeah, why don't I just end your life? And he makes pretty good points as to not to not do yeah. so. Yeah. Um, but he also wrote a very interesting piece on uh, is how, how existing is horrifying hmm. because of the choice, because we are born into this world without our consent. Have hmm. you heard of that term? Mm-hmm. This is the first I'm hearing of it. Sure. I, I, like, I've, I've heard uh, people speak about like um, when, when people get into arguments, let's say like with their parents or yeah, something yeah, like I that. I didn't choose to be and born. Like, I, exactly. I, I didn't, didn't choose to be born. Yeah. I didn't yes. ask to be born. I yes. didn't ask to fucking be here. Yes. Right. It, it's like that kind of idea it, because it's true. Yeah. You didn't. You right. were just here. You we were got born. Thrown into this terrifying world, and part of that terror is this not knowing this 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 inherently meaningless life that comes along with having a conscience. Yes, yeah, so that comes along with that, and and the horrifying part is because we are given so many choices and we don't know what to do. Uh, he even goes through this whole process of like forlornness, which is such a nice word. When you're forlorn, you like don't know what to do because you don't want to choose the right choice, right? Mm. That type of thing. Um, but that is essentially, uh, th- he calls it the existentialism as a humanism. That's literally the title of his like big thing. Mm. But essentially how, what it means to be human 
is to be thrown into this existence <laughs> and not be given anything to decipher how we're supposed to lead it. Because people, we, we don't have answers. Mm -hmm. We continue to ask this question all the time, mm -hmm. right? Like, what is the, the meaning? <laughs> but, but, but there's, I, right. my standpoint, and I doubt that you would sway me, is because I, I just don't believe it to be true, is right. that there is no overarching common belief amongst right. every human on the planet as to what the meaning of life is you could argue that's different for purpose because i believe that there is a consistent purpose which is just to reproduce and then right. to make sure that the human race lives on mm -hmm. and continues and that your offspring can live a happy life mm -hmm. but meaning mm -hmm. i i refuse <laughs> and i shouldn't say refuse i'm unlikely to agree that there would be a consistent meaning amongst everybody it's just not possible to me okay so that's the difference between their isn't and there ought not mm. and since we're approaching these topics from the top-down perspective it's always comes from the ideal to the real mm. and that's how i perceive things so even though you don't believe there is one should there be one could there be one is, so you're saying it's not a possibility i feel like there could be one right there just currently isn't one i could i've you look like you're gonna you're, no, no, you're, say something. you're saying there could be a meaning I feel like there. They could, could be a meaning. universal, like it's not just oh, meaning, universal, but universal meaning. meaning, a universal right. meaning shared amongst people. We're just we just haven't found it out yet. I don't think I think that there are obstacles in the way, and okay. this is I don't want to derail the conversation, okay. so I'll bring it, it back. But I want to say this: I, I think that if there were a world mm -hmm. where there was one religion, everybody has the same meaning. Mm -hmm. If there was a world mm -hmm. where there was no religion, we could all figure out what the fuck our meaning is without religion, without believing in something right. that's not here. But that's the point, right? We don't live in that world. Okay. And so that's why, to me, I don't believe that that's possible in the current state of our world. Did you want to talk about what it means to like leave something behind then? Yeah, I mean... Is that well, more important? Is that more significant yeah, than finding meaning in your current life? Well, I mean, okay, so this goes back to a religion point, which is essentially if we're going in the opposite direction of religion, right? Where there is a rule book and there is afterlife, the different, and then the opposite of that is there is no rule book and there is no afterlife. So why do anything? Uh, yeah, so why mm. do anything? But not only that, it's it's like... If there is no afterlife, whatever you may like, there's just nothing. You just die. <laughs> That's mm. it, right? Then it fundamentally matters more importantly what we leave behind. Mm. Right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, okay. noises. Because if there is an afterlife, there is um how do I say this? There is some <laughs> this is a, because there's an afterlife, there's something after. Yeah, right? I understand what you're so, saying. So so to a degree, the the thing that matters is what you do in this lifetime because there's no there's, nothing else afterwards to do. There's no there's no need for a legacy. Th there's uh, we can get we can get into that and we'll we'll pick that apart a little bit. You didn't read the questions, did you? <laughs> did. But I'm really glad you brought that point up because there's gonna we're gonna have a small discussion about what could be the meaning of life, mm. and that's a, that's a fun one. I really get your opinions on things because you clearly um, have, <laughs> have not previously thought about it. That which comes up towards the end of this yeah. this first part, so we'll get there. Um, so yeah, the question you had essentially was: Does it does matter it more? Or you leave behind? behind? And I think fundamentally yes, because that's we, we only get one chance. We only get one shot, and mm. if you choose to continue living because that's the thing that people don't well not people don't understand but people don't think about life is a choice life is the choice right mm -hmm. like talking about existentialism born without our concern consent and born um with all these decisions the first the biggest decision is to continue or not and people do yeah whether you realize it or not every day every moment is you making a choice which helps a little bit in terms of the horrifying aspect of existence. But you're not really getting to that decision until later into like like teen, younger teen years. Because you're not even thinking about that, right? Yeah, but every technically every person has the ability to make that choice. Obviously, you don't think... I mean, I mean, I mean but that, unfortunately... What I, the reason why I brought that mm -hmm. up is because... Let's say you start thinking about that question or those thoughts start mm. coming up, let's say, when you're 13. Mm. By that time, you're already in the rhythm or routine of mm. living life. Mm. So then it's more, it's easier, I would say, to live your life than mm. to start thinking about that decision or to cut it off. True. And I guess that isn't really the, the question isn't the easiness of it. It's just the ability. Mm. It's more, it's not the actual, we're not really going to 
go through those motions naturally unless something tragic happens or you know mental mm-hmm, health right. reasons mm-hmm. but i'm simply stating as human beings we have a choice yeah mm-hmm. right not the circumstances of yeah. that choice yeah um and i and i and i feel like when i conceive of that that helps me out a little bit that makes the world a little bit less horrifying where Mm. hey you know what at the end of the day i'm choosing to be here Mm. what's the next step and that's ultimately grounds you a little it grounds you a little bit right because you are a little bit more in control and that's what all these decisions are ultimately is just a little bit more of control in this very chaotic world that we live in Mm -hmm. yeah so we're saying a few things i'm going to try and like (laughs) recap what, what we've said so far here um we can agree that people who do practice a religion have something to follow, assuming that they're following the rule books of that religion and aiming for the afterlife or the the reincarnation for those religions that practice that, right? We can agree that people with religion have a clear meaning available to them. It's right. an option if they wanted to. Point. Because we also pointed out the fact that people that are religious don't necessarily always follow that to a T. Then there are the people who don't practice a religion. How do we find meaning in what we're doing? And we talked about the fact that let's say you accept that when you die, you die and that's it. Arguably, it might be more important what you leave behind. But we didn't really finish that up. So Mm. I'll maybe come to that in a second. But then what I want us to start getting into after we wrap that little piece up is what makes us human then (laughs) is what you're saying. Yeah, it seems like a big jump, but I really want to relate it to what you said previously about how you didn't believe it was we either have or even maybe possible for us to be united in meaning mm-hmm. if if we didn't have religion, if there was no religions, which is a very interesting concept. But what I want to bring up is this is not a good concept. We're all humans. Mm-hmm. And as we are all humans of all the same species and of a very particular species of animals, mm-hmm. um, people always make fun of me when I say human animals <laughs> mm-hmm. because we're human. We're yeah, animals, we're just human animals, but we're not top tier <laughs> apex predator. Top, top of the food chain. Top of the food chain. But we're not mere animals, right? Mm. That's, that's the weird thing too. We're not mere animals. Um, and it's something that I like to call, not even I like to, I, these are, none of these are my thoughts originally, mm. but this concept called the human experience. And that's why I'm hopeful that there may be something that connects us because we fundamentally share certain traits that are special to us as humans. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to say it out, out loud in here so no guesswork. Fundamentally, there's this concept called post-humanism. We'll start there. Mm. Uh, we'll start with post-humanism and work our way to humanism. And post-humanism is a very interesting topic. But ultimately, it's using technologies usually to defy two major aspects of what makes us human, which will define us. The first one is mortality. Mm. And not only that, we are the few species that know we're going to die and can think about our own deaths. Mm. So our mortality makes us human. That's like some greek tragedy shit there right Mm. that that fundamentally humans have known that for thousands of years what makes us human is our mortality and that's what separates us from the gods or whatever right Mm. um and talking about post-humanism um and getting to technology which is you know interest to many people right people have thought how can i use technology to extend my life download your brains into computers and stuff Mm. like that right and the other thing um is it's it's kind of a weird concept but i'll try to describe it um because we're conscious people, we have our self, right? We have our thoughts. And we can never fully express ourself to anybody else. Language is a mm-hmm. inadequate tool to do so. Mm-hmm. And there's no system that's possible for me to know exactly what you're thinking. So we have these we have our self and we're unable to express it. And that's mm. weird, mm-hmm. right? And and post-humanism, interestingly enough, would be a Can concept. Can I add something yeah, there? Yeah, please, please. Yeah, think it, about where are these, your like thoughts on these two my, my, concepts? My thinking of that is, um, yes, language is limiting in that sense. If you wanted to describe who you are at your very core, there's no way you could, mm-hmm. right? I, I, I couldn't imagine trying to summarize in any amount of sentences like who I am at, at, at my being and why I think the way I think and decisions. the decisions that I make are the decisions that I make. But then I'm imagining like a, I don't know, like a like a pack of meerkats 
You know what I mean? Like they, like you see them like all perk up and they all look at the same thing at the same time. You know, right. they're all thinking the same thing. Like right. they're, they're, their brains are wired the same way. They're, right. they're not as, they're, they are mere animals. Yes. <laughs> to use, oh, to yeah, use, I like that. I like how you use meerkats and use mere animals. To use your, your yeah. word and also yeah. meerkats. Yeah. Oh, it just happened God. to be what that I picked. Brilliant. But <laughs> that, that is like a differentiating thing. Right. Um, between us we we don't all react to things the same way we mm. don't all care about the same things we don't all worry about the same things we don't decide the same things right even the three of us in this room would approach a problem differently mm-hmm. you know and that is part of i guess what makes us human human right and this human experience right and once again the post humanist thought is if i'll just keep using the download our brains into a computer system mm. we uh the reason <laughs> So much of humanity is what it is, is because we use language to a degree to try to compromise and come to a conclusion of two different opinions. That's every conversation, every argument. Sure. And using that system, we're trying to find the answer. So I don't know what to mm. the system to mm. find the answer. Because if we were to download two brains into a computer system and mind meld them, we would have one that would be able to argue against itself and come to the, right. the conclusion, right? Like two people having different opinions. Mm-hmm. Uh, ideally, we would come to a conclusion that both can agree on. Right. So something to understand is that perfection isn't something that's possible in actuality. Hmm. Perfection, as we understand it, is a concept and cannot, by definition, be in reality. Sure. So the example I'll use... There's actually a term for this is called telos, which is a Greek term by Aristotle. And the telos of something is the 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 perfect version of something or the sorry, the ultimate purpose of something. And the perfect thing will do the ultimate purpose of something. And the example mm-hmm. he uses like scissors, right? You can imagine a pair of scissors is job to cut things. Mm-hmm. You can imagine the perfect pair of scissors. Oh. You can imagine it. <laughs> oh baby. <laughs> But is it in actuality, right? Mm -hmm. To a degree, things are mere reflections of the perfect ideal of something. And us as humans, though we may not be, and by almost definition, cannot be perfect, we should ideally try to go for these things, Mm -hmm. right? From, From the ideal to the real. So, sorry, let me bring you back. So we just kind of got a little bit off topic here, Mm. but... Posthumanism. The posthumanism. The second part of the posthumanism. The first part being mortality. The second part being Im- imperfect self-expression. We'll call it that. If we were to mind meld every human being on Earth, mm-hmm. we would become this one being that would have the perfect opinion about something. Sure, because can, it's taking into account yes every everything, opinion. every <laughs> yeah. opinion. And then just like how you, because you're alone in here, you can make a decision. Imagine if there was two voices talking all the time and, you know, do it to some degree to yourself. But, you know, there are definitely people you meet in the world where it feels like you never find a common ground. Mm -hmm. Imagine if that was there. But if we were able to perfectly understand each other, everybody was able to perfectly understand each other. We would have some sort of perfect answer for most things. Of course, that's impossible because of that post, that Mm -hmm. that humanist aspect of us. Mm -hmm. This makes me think about God, really. If we were able to meld everyone's perfect consciousness together Mm. that is the definition of god perfection Mm. and you know i i've i don't necessarily have a lot of people do uh, i mean i can only talk about my experience Mm. hearing about like christianity because Mm. that's what i grew up around Mm. and in in that case it's like what would god do you know like they would they god would would always make what would jesus do you know they'd always make the right decision because they are the ideal that is the ideal they are the perfect and I'm actually really liking where this is going because it's going to make sense in a little bit. Trust mm, okay. me. Um, <laughs> um, since by definition we are mortal and therefore not gods, right? Mm-hmm. We th- then we are the opposite of God. Just just like how we used we use God to define who we are. Do you see how I did that? Because we can't right. be that perfect being, we we're are the this. opposite of it. Mm-hmm. We use God to define who if we are. If not this, then that. If not this, then that. Mm. Thank you. And then previously, I used posthumanism to define humanism. This is going to be an important tool I use to sort of describe how things are by describing what they are not and using the opposite of this. And mm-hmm. this will come into play a little bit later, I promise. So 
talking about that, uh, uh, the humanistic approach. Um, and honestly, I don't really want to use that word because humanism is such a huge word. If you look at Wikipedia, it, it, it encompasses everything. Hmm. But the purpose of what and humanism are, is like, like being human. <sighs> Humanism, oh God, humanism. To, to give you like a short, because <laughs> yes. I want to yes. so make sure I'm yes. understanding where we're yes. going with this. The way we're using humanism is what defines the human experience. Cool. Simple okay. as that. Cool. And the definition of the human experience is our mortality and our, our inability to fully self-express. Mm -hmm. And because of those two things, we have now found a commonality between all humans. Okay. Right, because you were saying how mm -hmm. you don't think it's possible for all humans to have to find that meaning. Mm -hmm. Well, I just found something that all all humans, by definition, must share in common. So at least that gives us. But hope the things there. that we share in common are that we can't define ourselves. <laughs> Great, <laughs> we can't we can't fully express ourselves mm -hmm. and or and our mortality. Mm -hmm. That one, that's a given. That right. one's true. Right. <laughs> yeah, but so is that's true with all living things. Um, no, no, sorry, but not just our mortality, but our understanding Trees that we will die. Trees grow forever until they're cut down. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought mortality is including like the awareness. The awareness. Yeah, that's, that's like, sorry. come on, keep thank up, you. Ruben. Jeez, the wine God. is hidden. <laughs> okay, so I mean, like, given everything um, that we've talked about so far, mortal or meaning and purpose being different between those who might believe or not believe in religion, what we leave behind legacy finding some sort of common ground whether that be in our mortality as humans um or our inability to fully express ourselves that's what you said express right yeah, full, yeah i guess that's the best way of yeah. putting it yeah and and express like our our experience our lived experience <laughs> okay because <laughs> yeah. he's the inability to express his, and he's trying to express yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go perfect example exactly cool. cool was that even ironies or was that just like, <laughs> That just is what it is. Um, that being said, then, so like what to you, because I think you came to this conversation today, right. Jeff, with, in your own words, answers. Mm. Yeah, what cool. is the generally Pressure's accepted? On. <laughs> what is the generally accepted meaning of life? I'll just put it to you guys. Okay, when you think someone asks you, what is the meaning of life? You say, first thing that comes to your head. Don't think too much. It is. Pursuit of happiness. There we go. Happiness. Yeah, happiness. I would agree. Happiness. Happiness. Yeah. And yeah. you take Will Smith minus the slap, but you take Will Smith <laughs> and pursuit of happiness. And one thing that t to me stood out in that is that a book, by the way, first? Probably. I've only watched what the movie. It? Pursuit of is Happiness. There a, is there a book? Whatever it is. Yeah. But I feel like it is. <laughs> that in in there it's that it's it's the pursuit of it is not that you are constantly going to be happy because that to me would be like achieving perfection we've kind of talked about that a little bit mm -hmm. perfection would be if your life was happy all the time but then what do you have to compare it to how can mm -hmm. you compare perfection to something right. when you're always there right. and so the pursuit of happiness is like taking those rebounds making that decision from time to time that yes i am going to continue living my life mm -hmm. because i'm going to continue to pursue happiness that to me is in so, a way meaning of life. So what happens? Cabs looks like he has something else. I, maybe I just might change my answer. I'm not sure if I believe there is a meaning of life. Okay, cool. That's why we're having this conversation. Yeah, Good. Cool. I was I, the question was what is the generally perceived per, like, oh, generally okay. perceived answer, which is happiness, or the proof of happiness, which is a very interesting little like twist on it, mm. which which makes it um, a lot more relevant for for what we're speaking about. So you 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 so you don't believe in the generally conceived idea of the pursuit of happiness or happiness? I can understand why people believe in happiness being, or the pursuit or just happiness being the meaning mm. because. I feel like when you're at times when you're happy, it's the rare moment where you're not thinking about any of these, these, these thoughts are not popping into your head. It's the most, mm. it's one of the most pure moments where you're just in the moment. You're not questioning your existence. Yeah, and you're, you're literally happy. not questioning anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> let's, <laughs> you know, like, I'm yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> That's so true. Happiness is a state. Mm. Yeah. It's not meaning needs to be derived. That's mm -hmm. the biggest thing. I feel like so the difference between pursuit of happiness and happiness. It, let's just go by happiness, which people just usually happiness, not the pursuit of. So let's just say happiness. 
you it's something is the goal not the meaning of the life it's the end point hmm. happiness so th- people who say that it's like I don't, the result the re- the result of Action. x the mm. actual whatever the meaning is mm. right um and then the pursuit of happiness is interesting as well because you can derive meaning from the pursuit of it but i feel happiness as the end goal is is incorrect right. to say the least i mm. i understand that mm. cuz i i feel like maybe the more correct thing would be to say to experience happy happiness throughout your life as much as you can and then end up having a more fulfilled life right mm. because you've been like happy, that's now so. the result now you've brought happiness into the meaning right mm. but but the meaning itself and what meaning derives from is not happiness right mm. so so what have we how have we formulated our answer so far we are not looking at the answer we're looking at the opposite of the answer right god humans posthumanism opposite humanism. of an answer is a question so I, <laughs> opposite of an answer is a question well <laughs> i mean you're not wrong Arguably. cool that sounded really <laughs> philosophical yeah. um and i'm just gonna throw something in here just just for my just just humor me with my mm. philosophy my degree and this is the things mm. i've learned and um a lot of philosophy in particular it's like there's all these crazy ideas how are we how can we actually ever know anything well you know what are things that have definite answers math sure we use a system of logic which is a system of mathematics to make arguments so there's Mm -hmm. a branch of philosophy called logic and it's essentially math with arguments and Mm -hmm. it sucks and i hate it i'm not a logician that's the if this then that yeah, if the, yeah, exactly. I'm so glad you said things like that. Mm. So you can conceive of something as A. Anything can be A. And the opposite of A is not A. Hmm. But A also equals not not A. Right. Stupid. Does that make sense? Because yeah, math, math, that makes yeah. sense, mm. right? I understand that because of math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Because mm. of math and logic. And let's apply this all of a sudden. <laughs> So if we want to figure out, oh my God, we're doing algebra. Hope we all enjoy. Oh God. So if we can, if we want the meaning of life is a, and we already know based on our conversation that happiness is not a, mm-hmm. therefore the opposite of happiness, which is not not a, equals a. And that's my. Does that does that make sense, to yes, everyone? I get it. I mean, like on paper, yeah, that makes sense. Paper, on paper, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So here's here's the big here. This is what we've been leading up to. So based on that formulation and based on our understanding of what we talked about so far, the opposite of happiness in my definition is suffering. Mm-hmm. Therefore, the meaning of life is suffering. Whoa, we do. Whoa, whoa, I know. <laughs> and I know. And I know. I didn't write that in the. It is not, it in is the not there. Okay. So that's why. I really what are the other possible answers? Suffering is not here. <laughs> yeah. man. And, and we and we'll talk about this, but and then we'll go into the other things because I want to give. But I get what you're starting to get at. Okay. What, what, what do you <laughs> what do you think I mean? Let's, let's start with there. What do you think I mean? To Why me that ties into like when I when I say the pursuit of happiness right. as the meaning, the pursuit involves suffering. Mm-hmm. Because of that, like comparing to perfection, if we want to call happiness perfection and not not that yes. would be like chaos, I guess, <laughs> would be the opposite of perfection. That would be the, the, the suffering piece because you cannot know happiness without suffering. Mm-hmm. When you're born as a child, your two emotions are laughing and crying. That's the way that you express your two your two ways of feeling. Those are the, the opposing sides of things. Yes. Laughing and full of joy, that's happiness crying dealing with sadness and like going through shit in Mm -hmm. your life that is where you derive your meaning then (laughs) like the squinty eyes i like that but i want to remove happiness from the equation just entirely entirely uh the Mm. reason i want to do that is because from my understanding we'll get into a little bit more happiness isn't something to be pursued happiness is the result of living a good life so by simply doing that, happiness will come. And more often than not, and from even psychological studies, it's the people who try to pursue happiness that are the most unhappy. Mm. It's the people who live the good life. I mean, like, this is literally proven. The people that are the happiest are people who volunteer 
right? Mm. Those those type of people that give their time and they're not <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to volunteer to make me happy. No, they're in pursuit of doing something for someone else to a degree. Altruism. Al- altruism to a degree. Um but I want to remove happiness from the equation because I don't think it's meaningful to this conversation. Mm. The meaning of life is not happiness by its definition that we just said it is suffering and i'll get into that but what, what are your thoughts based on what i say based on the suffering based on my conclusion a right. logical conclusion as to what is suffering what are yeah, your go any, to hell what are your thoughts <laughs> on that? Does, does it feel wrong i feel like for a lot of people it feels wrong it feels wrong to say that the meaning of life mm-hmm. is suffering mm-hmm. yes that definitely <laughs> <is>. that, <laughs> sounds yeah. Yeah. that sounds absurd that sounds why up. first thought because then I'm thinking about it that the meaning of life is to literally struggle and suffer throughout your life. That's what I'm getting from it. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. <laughs> because I also want to make another split here in terms of, of meaning. There are things that uh, there is inherent suffering. Mm. Right? It's getting back to that thing. There is suffering in itself and things you choose to suffer for. Mm. Sure. So the definition I'm using... Are th- this is starting to make connections in my head, but I'll let you keep going. These, my definition of the meaning of life is the second one, which is the things you choose to suffer for. We can't take away the things that are inherently that we inherently suffer, which is existence, which gets back to we're born into this world, and the first thing that happens is suffering. Literally, the first thing that happens when we come out of the room is suffering. Mm-hmm. That's why we cry. Mm-hmm. bright lights the safety of the womb to yeah. get like a little bit more Take Freudian right yeah. because the, <laughs> the the pain right life is and not to get like this seems a little but like <laughs> like seems like oh life sucks but, but, but like, it's in actuality mm-hmm. you're born you cry things are mm-hmm. way too intense it's funny I have two nephews and like I've seen them have like little tantrums and stuff and I like didn't really get it until someone said to me this is literally the first time they've ever experienced this Mm. they have never experienced not getting a blueberry when they wanted it right they don't know how to react Mm. right and every new thing of suffering is is relevant that way and and unavoidable Mm -hmm. right but there are things you can choose to suffer for and therefore therefore i think you should derive your meaning through the things that you want to suffer for Mm. The choice. And that gets back right. to this choice thing, right? There's so many choices. What do we choose? Why not choose the things that we're willing to suffer for or want to suffer for? And I'll just, and this gets, this is really abstract right now. I get it. It's really mm-hmm. abstract. And the, 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 um, the example I always like to use is education. Mm-hmm. Very little people do education for pleasure solely, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> for happiness, <laughs> but they're willing, willfully suffering to better themselves. I get what you're saying. And that's where you should derive the meaning. Mm-hmm. The meaning of life is derived on the things you choose to suffer you for. You can even like look at it. Like, uh, we, we talk about it so many times on the podcast, stuff around fitness and like physical health, exactly. right? Physical wellness. You can choose to suffer by going to the gym five times mm-hmm. a week, choosing it to, to restrict what you're eating in order to meet certain calorie goals or macro goals, whatever it's going to be. That's a choice mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to get to something else. Mm-hmm. You can choose to work more mm-hmm. if you want to buy new expensive pair of shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Work two jobs. Right. You choose to do mm-hmm. that. To, to, to give more examples here. You choose to do that. Work two jobs. And, and do you see how we're deriving meaning from this? Mm-hmm. We're not, we don't derive meaning for the pursuit to make us happy. We should derive meaning from the things that make us better. Mm -hmm. And that's always been my viewpoint, which is, I, I, you know, I really hate when like people get into a relationship and one partner is really terrible. And then someone will say, as long as they're happy, Mm. uh, fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm always the friend. I'm always the friend that says, I don't, I, I, are they, are you, is that, are they making you better? Mm-hmm. And 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 that's why I always want to remove happiness from the equation. We live in such a society where it's like instant gratification, happiness, mm-hmm. and that's where I see why people are to agree lost because they they lie to themselves because of society. That is the meaning, mm-hmm. and it's clearly not working. By the way, right? <laughs> it's clearly not working. 
So therefore, we have to find the, find the alternatives. And that's why I had this pursuit of education and stuff, because I wanted to find out why happiness is clearly not working. And mm-hmm. that's why I come to these conclusions. I like these conclusions. Where are your, where are your thoughts on this? <laughs> disagree? Agree? Disagree? That's what, that's what uh, I love about these I remember agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was more so absorbing the info. Mm. Um, definitely didn't have an, a, a rebuttal to that, but yeah. uh, agree. What's nice about me is that I have rebuttals for myself. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 and, and sorry, getting back to this, that's why I really value my education mm. um, because a lot of Douche the you know, okay. <laughs> the difference I feel like for people that are I just I would say is like are philosophically spiritual or spiritually philosophical and do their own research which is great because they're at least interested in the topic people just have a tendency to cherry pick things they already want to believe Mm -hmm. and when you self-study you have a tendency to lean towards arguments that you already agree with sure and you don't always take the time to look at the opposite side of things Mm -hmm. and once again that's why i've so much appreciated my formal education is you were forced to look at the other side right the stuff that you wouldn't agree with otherwise exactly and not only that oftentimes we had to write a paper and make the argument Mm. against yourself Hmm. so that's the constant battle that i have every time i think i'm right i try to think of every way i'm wrong and if I can't think of any ma- way, any more ways I am wrong, then that seems to be the answer. Hmm. And that's how I feel like we should try to figure things out. It's is, a good way of deducing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a deducer. Deducer, <laughs> the deducer. I the deducer. <laughs> yeah. Um, and <laughs> all right, we're like half, half how many bottles of glass of water we do? I'm done my third glass. So good. Philosophy just makes more sense when you're drunk. That's what I've realized. Mm. But that's why I, I'm, once again, gratitude towards the time and effort I've spent towards things. And mm. I'm a better person for it because I am I have changed my mind on things that I've felt strongly about. And that's why there's that demarciation, which is, mm. I really hope I'm using that word right because it'll sound so dumb. <laughs> but between um desire inclination versus logic right because mm. people just have this gut feeling people just go for the gut feeling that comes back to me saying that you don't sound very instinctual it's funny that's because like following a gut feeling versus following logic which is weird because people who know me will mm. always be like it's, you seem like the guy that just does whatever they mm. want all the mm. time right this guy walked in on my going away thing um from my last job and immediately he goes let's get some shots like <laughs> yelling at <laughs> At an Earl's. Like, this is not the place when my to coworkers yell. have never seen me out of work. Yeah. yeah. They're like, okay. <laughs> but but like there's a time and a place yeah. for our desires. Mm. But I've always <laughs> felt our, our desires and inclinations bring about what we care. It gives us a direction, right? It gives us a direction, but it doesn't tell us where to go. Mm. Right? That's the best way I can sort of describe it right it's a compass to a degree right to kind of pinpoint where because it's just it just comes out of nowhere right it's spontaneous mm-hmm. in that way but then we must use logic to a degree to really is that, is that the right thing is that mm-hmm. did i feel and the thing about feelings is that they are subjective by nature and mm-hmm. therefore they can change and that's why i try to use logic whenever possible to make these decisions and getting back to this why if you have a defined meaning of life mm-hmm. it helps with those de- decisions when your gut feeling is to say no to them right sure now we've kind of the the last thing we kind of lined up on was that the meaning of life would be suffering yes can there be other answers you brought up altruism mm-hmm. you brought up legacy mm-hmm. let's talk about them let's just go this direction because i think you brought it up first mm-hmm. why did you think maybe legacy could be a meaning I'm going to shoot you down, by the way, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> prepared to get destroyed. I came prepared. Okay, please, Bob, uh, I want to hear it. Let me say, first of all, <laughs> I, I don't think legacy is... <laughs> so put your guns down. You just happened to mention it. But that's yeah, not a, I, did, I didn't mention it because we mm. were... I don't remember. We were talking about if there is an afterlife, mm. then I was saying, what's the point of mm. a legacy? Right. Mm. Be- because there is an afterlife, so there's other shit going on. Right. After. I have my own thought of legacy, but I'm, I'm letting you like keep going. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's so classic Kabir. I feel like if you like, we can make it like a super cut of Kabir. Do you want to say more? No. 
<laughs> like if, he, if he hits a pause and I'm just like, go. Oh. Sorry. You didn't say that. Sorry, well, you were going to say something about legacy. <laughs> really? Okay. Because yeah. no, yeah, you, 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 you didn't say that you agree that there should no, be legacy. No, I yes. don't. Because but it's an idea. It is an idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's sufficient for us to talk about it because mm-hmm. it is an idea and, you know, a, a legitimate one only in the sense of human history, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just going to say this right now. The best example is it's fucking House of the Dragon. If anybody's been watching that. No one's been watching House of the mm. Dragon, the the Game of Thrones prequel thing. I understand what it is. I know. What it <laughs> Did is. you even watch Game of Thrones? I've been no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Never mind. This I've been is watching the wrong Rings crowd. of Power. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Fine. I'm not gonna go through what what House of the Dragon is about, but ultimately, and in accordance to history, I feel like the pursuit of legacy has destroyed people. To me, and I'm I'm gonna maybe agree with you a little bit. Genghis mm. Khan. Sure. That's awful. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The when when you talk about legacy, yes, and we've we've talked a lot oh, about. Oh, we're talking about children and as well as what people think of you, right? Come again? Oh, sorry. You no, you, no, 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 no. You finish your talk. No, no, you finish no, no, your, no, 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 your, no, no, no. I don't. I don't care sorry. about that. No, that. Um, when when I think about legacy in the context of our conversation today, uh, earlier we had talked about how um, one thing that differs us from a god right. is more mortality. Yes. Right. Legacy, in a way, is immortality. Interesting. Mm. So to me, when someone might look at the meaning of life of legacy, it's like trying to ah, to reach a position yeah, of immortality in right. some sense. Right. Your your physical self has died. You are no longer present. But right. people are going to remember Michael Jackson forever. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that level of legacy is... Mm, you, you can't pretend it doesn't exist. Right. And you can't pretend... That people ha- is a, is is a thing that people have intentionally or unintentionally pursued, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing too, right? Is like I, I I don't know if people like are always like the people. Someone like Michael Jackson, mm-hmm. like did they live their life going right. like I'm going to be remembered right. forever? Mm-hmm. Like I don't know that, but 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 that's what I mean. That but there's a difference between that and actually making it the meaning of your life. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. like the meaning of life, of legacy, right? Yes. Like that—that's a different conversation. And then that's when you're saying, like, when people pursue that, yes. that destroys them. Yes, um, I really like the point where you mentioned how legacy is a form of immortality. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always, uh, by the way, I really didn't get to talk about it while we we're talking about posthumanism. But I am adamantly against posthumanism. Mm. It's really interesting. We live in such a society where technology is such a big thing, and this idea of like cyborg selves and all that type of stuff is such a cool idea Mm. but i'm like abhorrently against it and my idea of that is simply because once we come become post-human we're no longer human Mm. and i feel like any attempts humanity has ever tried or will try to not be human will always end in failure and destruction and horrifying consequences it's the flying too close to the sun thing right. sure once Icarus. humans try not Icarus. to be humans shit's something bad's gonna happen that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. the example i've used and it was one of my philosophy papers i made an argument about not wanting to go to heaven um, because when you go, like, you know, when you go to heaven, you become an angel. Like that was the premise, mm. right? I'm using a very general plain speaking way of this conception of what heaven is, or at the very least you become the perfect version of yourself. Mm-hmm. But once you become an, an angel or an enlightened being, you are no longer yourself. You're mm. no longer human. Mm-hmm. You've transcended that by definition. And I don't think I would ever, it, it's a form of death. Mm. right so by definition we're unable to ever do that so the pursuit of we as the human the human race unable to ever do that yes and to a degree you have to die you have to die in some way in order to do that even if you become a cyborg right Mm. to a degree we're no longer who we are right Mm -hmm. um so much of the human experiences are physical bodies Right. Oh man, that remind. Can I go off topic a little bit? Do you remember? Oh, yes. Do you remember that? Uh, was that uh, Netflix? Black Mirror. Uh, there's another one. It's a uh, uh, this altered act- carbon. There we go. Altered carbon. Thank you. Um, Takeshi Kovacs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Altered Carbon, and there was that in the second season, which was not good. Um, yeah, terrible. Oh, was it the first thing? Anyways, they were they were like showing off weird things at this party, and it was like sleeving into another animal. Mm. Right, putting human brain into a snake to, body. For very quick context. Yeah. Sleeving was the idea that you upload your consciousness into this disc, and that disc can be uploaded into like other bodies, other physical yes. cells later. That was the whole idea of altered carbon for those of you who have Which seen. is a huge post human idea, yeah. right? Where, you know, our consciousness type of thing. And so much of our understanding of the world is because of our human bodies and our human limitations to a degree, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I always feel like whenever there's this talk about post about becoming an angel, becoming enlightened, becoming a cyborg, you are you're not you. Mm-hmm. By definition, you're no longer you, and that's a form of death. Mm-hmm. So that plays back into the whole mortality thing. So immortality, right? So mm. anytime we try to be anything but mortal, we go against being human. Being human. Fair enough. So, I, but I really like that point of of this concept of immortality because mm. humans are this weird things that want to persist after they die. For yeah, yeah. Reason. Legacy is our way of doing that. Right. Mm. But once again, it's ultimately wrong for the reasons I've now, said. the. <sighs> mm. Like, th- I feel like there is some 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 positive in that. Like, yes, the pursuit of legacy is something that might destroy you. But the the consequence of you living a good life sometimes is legacy. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, can, you can think about your grandparents. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, I, I have very fond memories of my grandma. Like, I didn't know her for very much of my life, but I, I have very fond memories of my grandma. Like, that to me is a positive legacy that I'll know. Right. That's not necessarily something the world knows, but I'll know my life and my existence is different because of how I respect my grandmother. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and and that's why I always need to bring this back to the topic of the conversation, which is the meaning of life. I'm just going to say this. The meaning of life for your grandma wasn't so that my grandson thought no. I was awesome. No, right? no. And that's, yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean, where cool. her legacy was the was result not the was not the meaning. Yes. It was the result of living a good life. True. My, my, me saying that yes. is not to say that legacy would be the meaning, but <laughs> yeah. legacy is still a good thing. Yes. It is a good consequence I, of living a exactly. good life. And that's why I feel like we always need to refocus. We need to refocus because yeah. people mix up the meaning of life versus the consequences of mm-hmm. those things. Now, if it's okay, I yes. want to keep us yes. steered here for a second. We'll really quickly touch mm-hmm. on my other answer that yes. I talked about earlier, which was altruism. Yes. Altruism would be doing things for other people, making other people's lives better or easier while you're here. That's that's for like no benefit. Your, for no benefit. That's oh, the big point. For, for no, no benefit. benefit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, altruism is for no benefit. <laughs> Even if the benefit is in itself, like you, you feel happier doing that. True, and there's the argument that alt- real altruism cannot exist for humanity yeah. because mm. feeling good for doing something for no benefit is the benefit. Yes, we can go into that. No. <laughs> <laughs> And and that's why ultimately mm. I don't really believe in altruism. Just from that statement, I can I can sh- almost shoot down that argument based on that in itself. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it's makes impossible. It's not. Sense. It's not. You know why it's not humanly possible? It's because we are ultimately selfish beings. Mm-hmm. If I had to speak about another very common thing people say is the meaning of life, pleasure. Mm. Simple. I live to feel good. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means to you. Food, sex, alcohol, drugs, blah, whatever. Mm. Um, I I only pursue things for the pleasure of it, right? Mm. And everything else I do, like my job, whatever, is in the pursuit of pleasure. Sure. Right? So, yeah, you might be working your job, which is not pleasurable, but it's in pursuit of pleasure. Living for the weekend. Living for the weekend. Right. <laughs> and, you know, pl- pleasure, obviously, is a nice thing. I'm not going to argue against that. But I feel like if you derive the meaning of life in pleasure, it's it's self destructive in that way, because it's a simil- it's similar to happy. Weirdly enough, happiness and pleasure are not the same thing. Mm. That's why I didn't relate them or mention it at all. Pleasure is a purely body experience thing, right? Mm. Um, and that's different from happiness, which I feel like is a mental thing. Mm-hmm. So though pleasure is nice. The arg- the traditional argument for pleasure is the happy pill argument. If you had a, if someone created the perfect drug with no actual consequences that gave you perfect pleasure all the time, would you just take that? Most people would say no because that's literally called heroin. But <laughs> 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 but, but, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It looks like Cavs would say yes. I would probably say yes. You would, do I have an unlimited stash? It, it, that, that's funny. If you had a choice, be like, hey, we have this experimental program. You take one pill, last 24 hours, and you just feel pleasure nonstop. You would be willing to do that for the rest of your life. Uh, Maybe, yeah. I know that would take away from me being... I feel like that would take away from me being human, ultimately. <laughs> right. Mm. But... I would have to think about it. Would you not miss your friends, your family? Oh, okay. So this would mean because you're in perfect pleasure. I, I'm in perfect pleasure, so I don't. You just sit no, there and you have yeah, no yeah, there's no to do yeah, anything, there's no else. To do anything else. No, because that's the point. Mm, that Why is, would right. there be an instinct? You're perfectly sated in your pleasure. That's a good fucking scenario, mm. right? That uh, they call. Is that, anybody else hard right now? <laughs> <laughs> MDMA. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the closest uh, you get. It's the closest you can get, but you, uh, you the know, if there was, are awful. Even even if there were no consequences, even if there were no consequences, I'd very much. I mean, as a thought experiment, people may say yes, but given the very real option, I don't think people would because you might as well end your life. Mm. There's nothing else, right? Because if now you're taking that thing. Mm. What else is there to live what for? What else is there? What are you continuing yeah. on for? What's mm. next? If tomorrow's going to be the same thing mm. for the rest of your life, you're mm. done. It's you perfection. Won. It's that perfection right. that we can't and shouldn't have as imperfect beings. Mm. Mm. We and, shouldn't have. Yeah. Yes. Mm. That makes sense. Or, or nor do we really honestly desire. We always think we desire something until we actually get it. Imperfection's cool. Yeah. Imperfection's cool. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm down for that. Mm. Um, so that, that's my argument for it. And like, these are very, the things I've talked about specifically like hedonism, right? Hedonism is that concept of living for pleasure. And there, if, if anybody listening wants to do their own research, there's tons of actual philosophical arguments against hedonism, right? Mm. We're just doing a very basic version of it. Yeah. I mean, every, we've talked about so much. Thanks for listening to me rant. (laughs) I love it. And it's, uh, I haven't done this for a few this episodes. Has been and, pleasurable. This has Aww. been pleasurable. <laughs> I haven't done this for a few episodes, which is trying like actually summarize up. everything that we've <laughs> talked about. I've kind of just let things end, um, but I'll try and summarize because I think it's more relevant now because we're about to start a part two. We're going to continue to sit here. And for all of you, our, our audience, uh, this is the end of this episode coming up in a moment here. 50 likes. 50 likes. <laughs> that's all, if we that's get all 50 he's likes asking. on the YouTube episode. Hi, bro. We will no. That's ten thousand likes. <laughs> if we get fifty likes on the YouTube episode, then part two is going to come out next week. If not, you got to wait two weeks. It'll be out in two weeks from now. Um, so it's a real test to see if our actual subscribers actually give a shit and want to fucking show they give a shit. Uh, but let me try and summarize what we've talked about and what will be part one of this episode about meaning and purpose in life. So. We talked about at the very beginning, meaning and purpose being different between someone who might be uh, religious or prescribed to a religion, someone who believes in a God, an afterlife, something like that. That gives them, in a way, meaning. Inherent meaning. An inherent meaning through those, those, those rule books, those guidelines of how you're supposed to live your life. For those of us who do not practice a religion, then how do you come to define a meaning? Uh, we eventually got to the point that meaning for us may be suffering the meaning in life is suffering which we can agree is a weird thing to say and it doesn't sound right but that if you if you use that whole logic approach of it which is that there's this happiness as a and if not blah 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 and then not not mm. is this the opposite of that is going to be the meaning or sorry the meaning is a <laughs> oh happiness is the other thing sorry i lost my own math there <laughs> meaning a Happiness cannot be that, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, we got a into suffering. A equals A or A equals not, 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 not a. a. And not, mm-hmm. not A is then suffering. That's what we got to, okay? Uh, but we also talked about some other possible alternatives to what someone might say the meaning of life is. Um, we got a lot of philosophy education going on in this episode, courtesy of Jeff. Jeff has shared a few Everyone hates things. me. Everyone thinks I'm a douchebag. No, this is great. <laughs> um, these episodes are always fun to do. Um but we're we're going to proceed with our conversation under the assumption that the meaning is suffering because you can derive meaning because you can derive meaning in that i won't disagree you won't well, disagree you're not convinced all, yet well yes not <laughs> cool. not convinced not but convinced. you very 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 briefly talked about selfishness yes and that is going to play a big part in 
the next portion of this conversation. So for all of you listening, watching at home, we hope you enjoyed this part. Uh, but we are gonna we're gonna switch. We're gonna pivot. We're gonna stay here. But I gotta swap some batteries out and get these cameras ready to go for part two. I, I was gonna say to add on to that. Thank you for the conciseness of what we talked about. Is all over the place, mm. but it's it's great that we have maybe thought about what the meaning is but meaning in itself isn't anything if we don't do anything about it mm. and that's why a lot of people ask that's why people ask like what do you think like I, when people say when people ask me what i do what i have degrees and i say philosophy the first thing i always ask is oh what's the meaning of life right and i think that's not the right question mm. the, that's not the right question because it's not enough to have the meaning of life we need to do something with it. And that's why I want to talk about the meaning and purpose of life derived from what we've, what I've concluded it is the meaning. Cool. Let's get going with part two and we'll see y'all in either a week or two. It's up to you. Peace.